game live from Soldier Field in Chicago. The New Jersey Generals face the Chicago Blitz. And a lot is at stake for the New Jersey Generals. In the Atlantic Division, Philadelphia has already clinched. New Jersey, by continuing to win, can wrap up a wild card spot. But now hear this. We are in Chicago. It is cold. It is soggy. It has been raining since late last night. And the wind chill factor, and we're not kidding, the wind chill factor this 28th day of May is 19 degrees. 19 degrees. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire and not too many other people. It may be the lowest crowd attendance in USFL history. But let's get down to the facts of Walt Michael. He's worried about three things. The wind and the rain that could produce turnovers. The fact that the Blitz have beaten Denver, beaten Los Angeles, they could win tonight. And the fact that the Generals, who want that playoff spot, are not playing very well, Paul. Well, if you take a look at the New Jersey Generals, they are 10-3, and 3, but they are not playing like a 10-3 and 3 team. The last couple of games, Washington beat them, Pittsburgh beat it, or almost beat them. Those are teams that are on the bottom. Walt Michaels, and it's no excuse at all, they've had a lot of injuries. But the big problem is tonight, the fact that they practiced all week in decent weather, coming in, put their passing game in with Seif, who has not had a good couple of games. And now you come into this kind of weather where all you're going to really be able to do is run the football. It's got to hurt them. Thank you, Tom. And Chicago kicks off. And Marcus Hackett watch it go out of the end zone. Chicago won the toss, but such is the weather tonight, they elected to kick off instead of receive. And so New Jersey will go on the attack. Brian Seip coming out, not had a great couple of weeks, intercepted five times two weeks ago by the Federals. Was 11 for 25 last week. Herschel Walker, 34. Maurice Carthen, 33, your running backs. Clarence Collins is back tonight, 82. Danny Knight, 80, the wide receivers. Jeff Speck, 81, the tight end. Mackey and Millard, the tackles. Lapham and Jewell, the guards. And Kent Hall at center. From the 20-yard line. And here comes Herschel. And there goes Herschel for first down. Across the 30-yard line. Malcolm Taylor, 70. Dennis Puha, 93. Mike Morgan, 76. Ray Cadditch, 61, your front four. Jeff Gabrielson, 52. Tom Kilkenny, 54. Ken Kelly, 59, your linebackers. Trent Bryant, 21. Virgil Livers, 24, the corners. Mike Fox, 27, playing a strong safety tonight. Tommy Wilcox, 25, the free safety. There goes Collins, injured with a chest injury out wide to the right on first down from a 31. 338. Walker in motion. That's Carthen. Carthen dragged down by big 93 Dennis Puha. Puha out of Honolulu and Nevada Reno. 255 playing the left tackle spot. Jim, the Chicago Blitz did win the toss, and you've got to understand what they're doing. Kicking off with this wind as bad as it is. What they're hoping to do is to stop the New Jersey Generals on the first, well, they already picked up one first down, but stop the New Jersey Generals, make them punt, because we were watching the kickers earlier, and the ball's going about 15 to 20 yards. And so is the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and about eight. And Sight hands the ball off, and that is Carthen, and Carthen gets the first down across the 40-yard line. You've got to remember that Chicago is last in the USFL in defense, last in the pass, last in the run, last in total defense. And also last in giveaway takeaways. All right, Maurice Carthen. Now, remember, last week he fumbled two times in the game. One resulted in a touchdown. But take a look at the blocking up front. Maurice Carthen picks up the first down. And here again, it goes against the Chicago Blitz because what they wanted to do was hold him in the territory, in, in New Jersey's own territory. They're out to the 44-yard line. First down, Sipe. Here's Herschel Walker. Walker trying to get outside, and Walker is met. As he gets to the 46-yard line, a pickup of two yards. Ken Kelly, the linebacker, number 59, a rookie out of Penn State, came over to make the stop. We sympathize with all of you out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Don Heinrich and I will be next Saturday night. What a tragedy with the floods out there and the deaths that were the result of those floods. Nothing like that in Chicago, just lots of rain, high winds, and a wind chill factor of 19. And that's enough to cool off your holiday weekend. Ball at the 46, second and eight, no score early in the first quarter. Three, 335. Roll. 335. Hut. Sight, first pass of the night, loops it out for Herschel Walker. Walker run out of bounds across the way by Jeff Gabrielson. Starting tonight at the left linebacker spot, number 52. 
Jim, those are the only passes that really that, that both teams will be able to throw. Uh, the short passes to the backs going out in the flat, some tight ends across the middle, six to eight yards. But to get the ball downfield with ac accuracy is going to be very difficult. Walt Michaels along the far sideline. Third down and eight to go. Showing blitz. Sipe has time. The ball is tipped and the ball is intercepted across the way by Trent Bryan. And there's the first of what we anticipate to be many turnovers tonight. That was not necessarily because of the weather. Intended for McConaughey and Trent Bryant was there. And Chicago has the ball at their own 44-yard line. And Larry Canada, who is their leading ball carrier, gets the ball across the 45 to about the 47 where... Willie Harper, the veteran out of uh, San Francisco 49ers, made the stop. All right, here's the interception of Brian Seip going back to pass. And, and the, the ball is really not tipped, Jim, but Trent Bryant plays it very well. Tom McConaughey is the man it was intended for. But you can see that there were two people out there. They also had the linebacker, Kelly. You talked about Brian Seip throwing the ball high last week. That ball's trajectory made me believe it was tipped. It was thrown so high and loopy. Exactly. Second down seven. Vince Evans hands the ball off. Canada carrying the ball again. Breaks it to the outside. And is close to a first down. On top of him is John Joyce out of Colgate. James Lockett, 96. Tom Woodland, 71. Lynn Matson is not starting tonight. A neck problem. So Jim Burns, 74, completes the front three. Willie Harper, 56. Jim LeClaire, 55. John Joyce, 47. And John Miller, 57, starting tonight over the injured Bob Leopold. At the corners, Kerry Justin, 23, Terry Daniels, 24, John Preston, the strong safety, and Gregory Johnson filling in for Gary Barbaro, the weak safety, number 27. Third and short. Hartnett comes in at the right guard spot for Chicago. And Canada's doing the bulk of the work, and I don't know if he got it or not. Very close. Very, very close. Like Lockett is the man who submarined him. Number 96. And Vince Evans is saying, we've got that much. Now let's see how Marv Levy plays this. He is in the territory of New Jersey. They're going to call for a measurement. That will give Evans a chance to talk it over. When you're 4-9 and going nowhere in a rainstorm, you go for it, do you not? You have to. I mean, they're not going anywhere, especially the team that has no owner. <laughs> they don't have anybody to yell at them. That is really something because if they... And this is all conjecture out here, not on the part of Paul and me, but on the part of nearly everybody in Chicago. If they simply declare the franchise bankrupt and start a brand new franchise here, what happens to all the contracts of the coaches and players? They're all worried about it and let them not kid you and let's see if he made it. He did not make it by that much. And so Vince Evans and we can see that Vic James is coming in as a wide receiver. So obviously they're going to go for it. Well, the hundred people that are here want him to go for it. No score. 10 14 to go. First quarter. Rainy, soggy night at Soldier Field, and not a disappointing crowd, an expected low crowd. Holiday weekend and terrible weather. And a ball club that has not had good success at the box office all year long. I don't think that the fact that in the Chicago paper today they had game time starting at 8 o'clock here had any effect on the crowd. It's just been a miserable day unless you really have to be here. And let me explain that. It is 8 o'clock for you, those of you watching the East a little after, but only after 7 here in Chicago. Well, they'll go for it. First play of the game after the interception by Trent Bryant. And this time Vince Evans muscles out the first down. Evans, a big, strong man, muscles out the first down and gets the ball out across the 45-yard line and the market right at the 45-yard line, and that's more than enough. Okay, on this side, on this side. I got Evans, who used to play for the Bears, trying to get some life in this team. That includes Larry Canada, who used to play for the Broncos, Vegas, Ferguson, who used to play for the Pats and the Oils and the Broncos also. Or the Browns, rather. First down at the 45. Gary Worthy is the halfback in there now. He had some big runs last week. A rookie, and he'll get the ball here. He's got some speed, tries to break a tackle. Look at that. Hanging on was Willie Harper, 
And Gary Worthy just dragged him with him. Only picked up about a yard. What, what a great play. Watch 56 Willie Harper. Now he's going to come out and, and take on the back, which is Canada, and then make the play in the backfield. That's just super play. Worthy is, is there, but Willie Harper's hanging on, waiting for Joyce to come up and help out. When you get a linebacker that's got to take on the back and make the play and hold it to a one-yard gain, that's just excellent play by the linebacker. Second down, nine. Sean Potts, the rookie, is coming as a wide receiver. He's wide to the right. Gary Lewis has slotted inside him. But that is Canada with the football. Canada carries the ball down to the 40-yard line. And this is exactly what Walt Michaels was saying. He said they're playing loose, despite all of these problems the Blitz have with ownership, etc. They're playing loose, and they're playing hard. And I'll tell you one thing that has been true nearly every time of the Blitz. When they've had a bad ball game, and they were blown out last week by Birmingham, they usually come back and play very well. Well, they've got, again, they have everything in their favor. And I'll get into, I'll get into their defensive scheme of things uh, when they get on defense. But everything worked out as far as their game plan in this game because of the weather. Ferguson and Canada. Remember Ferguson and Worthy. Alternate bringing in plays. Here's Vince Evans back. And he loves to run. And so he's going to run and take on a few people and be just shy of the first down. And it'll be fourth down about a half a yard again. Jim LeClaire, with a game-saving interception last Monday night against Pittsburgh, made the stop along with James Lockett. And again, it's fourth down, and again, you know they're going to go for it. Oh, if, you, if you go for it at the 49, you're going to go for it at, at the 39. All right, here's LeClaire. He's looking at it pass. Now he sees that Vince Evans is running with the football, and he does get some help by number 96, James Lockett. Evans, they don't give you the slide. They're marking the ball at the 36-yard line. Fourth down. They've got to get the ball to the 35. Stop it! And that's a little bit longer than what they had before, remember. So maybe Canada will get the call here. No. It is going to be Worthy. And Worthy's got it. Check that. That's Vegas Ferguson. You can see him down the bottom there, 26. John Joyce made the stop. They're going to go to the side of Stroth and Fisher and, and Hyde over there and just take it Vegas Ferguson. The hole was really not there in the middle of the field, so he just stepped to the side and picked up. Well, he picked up three yards on the play. This ball game is leaping along. I want to tell you, they have only been playing about 12 minutes and six minutes have gone off the clock. Well, Cummins have gone off in about 15 minutes as they keep running the football. They have not been putting the ball in the air. John Miller makes the stop. And getting up after, well, why not? Larry Canada carries the ball many more times than anybody else. He's also the second leading pass catcher. Well, since you're talking about that, and for the people that joined us late, Sipe threw one pass, or two passes, excuse me, one to Herschel and he dropped. The other one was intercepted. Vince Evans went back to pass one time. Didn't have anyone open, so he ran with the ball. So Chicago, really, they have not passed the ball yet. And... <laughs> that is Worthy. Worthy gets inside the 25-yard line. Lock continues to run. And let's face it, Paul, they've always bragged about their offensive line. That is one of the strong points of the Blitz, and they've been able to move this Jersey defense, which is number three in the league against the rush, right down the field since they got the ball at the 44. And it also tells you the strength of a defense when they know that all you're going to do is run the football. You're not going to pass the ball, and you can't stop them. Ferguson looking for some place to go. is very close to the first down. Very close to the first down. John Joyce on the stop. Jim Byrne on the stop. And are we going to have a third consecutive fourth and something, or did they get the first down? They're going to kick a field goal. And a go for the field goal in this close. Remember, there's a strong wind behind them. Those fans who are here figured why. Kevin Seibel, though, is an outstanding field goal kicker, and they got fourth down on the yard to go. And remember one other thing. Jeff Gossett, who is the holder and the punter, was a quarterback in college. Not necessarily to throw, but they have a play off of the field goal where Gossett has the option. It's basically run, but he can pass if he has to. Well, this would be a 42-yard attempt. He's only three for seven in this distance. And they're going to kick it. He's got the wind behind him, and the question is, is it straight? Yes, it is. And we'll come back. The Blitz lead by three.
Walt Michaels has reason to purse his lips. He was afraid of something like this. First down as team trails 3 nothing. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire with Soldier Field Chicago. Starting the second quarter. Canada carrying the ball. And up top, you can see John Miller hanging on. Look at the, the first quarter stats. <laughs> Total yards, 15 for New Jersey, 32 for Chicago, something we expected. Here's something we didn't expect. We talked about the strength of the Chicago Blitz offensive line. They have the second line in. Doug Happick, Walters, Hartnett, Jiggets. Uh, the only starter is Mark Fisher, the, the center. Second down, and they're moving the ball against the number three team, as we said, against the rush in the USFL. And there goes that man Worthy again. And Worthy is close to a first down. John Joyce makes the stop. Worthy last week got in, used more than often. He had a 61-yard run. That is the longest in Blitz history. And then he caught a 78-yard touchdown pass, and that is the longest in Blitz history. And now we have a man down injured, and you can see it is a member of the Chicago Blitz. So while he is down, one more time with the score 3-0 Chicago. Come back after this. From the 21, first down. Collins in motion. Side, and here's Herschel again. Herschel finds a little opening and gets out near the 29-yard line. That'll be second down and short. Tommy Wilcox had to come up and hit him again. Yeah, but I'll tell you, Maurice Carthen, number 33, that big fullback out front of Herschel, just take a look at him. He's going to come right in your face. Here comes Maurice Carthen. He's going to get the block on the outside on Gabrielson. Gabrielson gets his hand on Walker, but look at how many more yards Walker got because of just that little check block by Carthen. Walker's carried seven times for 34 yards, almost five yards a carry. Amazing since on several occasions he's been forced out of bounds before he's gotten to the line of scrimmage. Second down and short, about two. And Herschel again. Herschel is very close to the first down. From where we sit, a little bit shy of the first down. Kilkenny and Gabrielson, linebackers in on the stop. He's got to, he had to get to the 32, and he didn't get there. Watch Carthen come out in front of Herschel. Herschel just looks at his fullback, and he's falling. He, he can't get any closer than that. But it was stuffed by Gabrielson. Gabrielson's playing very well. Our score, the blitz three on the 42-yard field goal by Seibel. After a turnover, Trent Bryan intercepted a sight pass, and that's been all. The generals have not moved out of their own territory. And Herschel is getting a lot of work tonight. And look out, folks. Look out. I will see you later. If anybody catches him, let me know, will you? Goodbye. That is just 69 yards, and all of a sudden, it's a different ball game. You know, Jim, you can sit up here and you have the feeling because there are two or three other occasions in the first quarter and the beginning of the second quarter where the chance that, that Herschel could have gone. He's going to get an excellent block by John Jewell, number 70, the guard. He's coming out. Carthen's going to seal it the inside. Jewell gets the block on the outside. There it is. Once he gets by, Herschel is gone. And you're right. If there is anybody in football that can catch him, I don't know who it is. Not on this field, at least tonight. Oh, look at this. Tell you what, Walker's already with that 69-yard run over 100 yards for the game, 105 yards on nine carries, averaging better than 10 yards a carry. And now in is Ruzek to add the extra point. He's only missed one all year long and does not miss that one. And with 11.06 to go, the score is now 7-3 to here in the first half. 7.54 to go, 7-3. New Jersey, and they've got the football at the 20 after a 43-yard kick by Gossett into that strong, strong win. Maurice Carpenter. Running room, first down. Hit as he went by by Tommy Wilcox. That sent him down. But Wilcox, as a free safety, is having a lot of strong safety-type plays tonight, forcing the play. Jim, and remember one thing, now we're into 737 and counting into the second quarter, and I don't know of any of the defensive linemen for Chicago Blitz that we've named as making a tackle yet. It's been Ooh, the linebacker. Who made one? That I do remember. Okay. That'd be one. one. All right, that's one. But you're, you're talking about uh, when they get to the secondary, they got running room. The safeties are in trouble. From a 34-yard line, here's Herschel. Walker slides and is put down. Lost back to the 28-yard line. Virgil Livers up to cover him. 
<laughs> I love Virgil Livers. Virgil Walker slips and falls down, and Virgil Livers goes on top of him. He jumps up like, take that, guy. I got you. Watch this. Here goes Herschel on the outside. He falls down. Virgil, Virgil jumps on him. Then Virgil, look at this. All right. Take that. I got you. You better Livers. be glad he's on the ground. <laughs> Livers is 5'9", 185. Walker is 6'1", 225. <laughs> Second down, 15 to go from the 29. Sight, one of his rare passes. Oh, has he got time? Now running out of time. Is he in the grasp? He is in the grasp. That's another loss. That's a sack. That is a sack. He was in the grasp. Line of scrimmage back up at the 34. The ball will be marked at the 22. That was Mike Morgan who got there. It looked like he had a lot of time, but the defensive secondary covered very, very well. There's Mike Morgan. He just throws away Lapham, and Mike Morgan is there. They have Sipe that is in the grasp. It's not intentional grounding. Good call. Third down and 22 to go. Sipe is going to give it to Walker, who's not going to throw the ball, and he's not going to get the first down either. I want to tell you, that's quite a hit made there by Donnell Daniel and Ron Harris. Not exactly big men, but it's going to be fourth down and 15 to go. Take a look at this. The two backs, Donnell Daniel and number 20, Ron Harris, is it? They just upend Herschel Walker. And that's the best play to hit, place to hit him, just cut his legs out. Well, I tell you what, Bob Grupp, who's not a bad punter at all, is thankful that this 4,000 mile an hour win. That's a slight exaggeration. Is behind him as he kicks the ball away to Daniel. Daniel's a good. Well, he doesn't get that good a kick away. And here's Daniel at the 30 yard line. And he's going to be able to pick up a few yards coming back the other way. Almost took his head off there. Gets out to about the 37 yard line. 5.18 to go. 7 3. The Generals lead the Blitz here in Chicago. Soldier Field, Chicago, seats about 65,000 fans with nobody here because of the weather and other circumstances. That man there could sit anywhere he wants. <laughs> As someone might say, he's sitting with all his friends. I don't know. That's what you call a real loner. <laughs> he is so far away, he could get on the 50-yard line. Nobody would stop him. Oh, you got to love that. to give him a free pass. Well, they probably did. That's where it is. From a 38-yard line. <laughs> it is first down, and Canada still with the ball. Bumps off one tackler. Takes on a couple more and gets no gain. Woody Harper over there put him down, but Canada ran into trouble right at the line of scrimmage, bumped back and continued on to the right. James Lockett is the man who forced him out of there. And it is second down and just about 10 to go. 440 and counting in this first half. And Paul, you're right, the rain has stopped, but what a drenching day and what a chilly, chilly night. They wore out the Zamboni trying to get the water up the field. This is not going to set any records for passing, maybe for lack of passing. Right ahead. That is Worthy, and Worthy is being carried along there. You can see Woodland at the bottom of the pile, and Joyce. Joyce out of Montclair, New Jersey, went to Colgate, is quite a linebacker. He's been with them a couple of years of existence, but got his first start last week and did an outstanding job. You know what this game is, Jim? It's one of those games that in training camp and, and, and during the, the weeks of practice, the offense and defensive linemen will tell you, when they go on that one-on-one -on -one drill with the guy in the offensive guard in front of the defensive tackle and they work at it, this where is, is where it pays off. When you know a team's going to run, you're one-on-one -on, -one on the man in front of you, and it's really played in the trenches. Look at where they are now. There's no setback behind Evans at all. And Evans gets the ball out and has overthrown everybody. Down the field was Chris Haynes, but he overthrew him by five or ten yards. Coverage down there was Justin and Johnson. Check that Caesar and Johnson. All right, here are the defensive backs. They know they're going to play. There's Preston, John Preston, who was our men and MVP last week, playing against Keel, the tight end. And he's the ball is not thrown to him. It's, it's thrown behind to Haynes. But as you said, that ball was way overthrown. There has been one drive by the Blitz. That was after the interception, one up with a 42-yard field goal. Since then, they've had to punt it away. And now Gossett's going to show us how good a punter he is in this strong wind again. And believe me, he is a good punter. Mike Williams, a man deep, standing at the 24-yard line. I snap. Drills that one into the wind. Williams back at the 20-yard line, oh, and he's in trouble again. And there's a, a illegal block from behind. You can see it right down there on the 20-yard line. Gregory Johnson 
went down and threw an illegal block and the unfortunate thing was the other 40 men or rather 20 men on the field were nowhere in sight only those two <laughs> when you do it out in the open oh. and, you know you got to see the guy's name on the back of his jersey you know you can't hit him Gregory Johnson just just blocked the Chicago Blitz man from behind no now question that, about it now that is a 39 yard punt we have not had one completion have we not yes Trent Bryant completed one you know, on the other end of a sight pass. The unfortunate thing is they're on different teams. Uh, <laughs> were you telling me something earlier today at the hotel about a game that you did up in uh, Buffalo, I New did York? it in your town of Buffalo. New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills and a rainstorm and wind such as this. And it was a fourth quarter before Namath finally got the first completed pass. Illegal block above the waist on the run back. Number 27. First the down. the ball game. Watch All this. Right. Okay, here comes the block. Now... You know that that man is <laughs> is already in front of you. I can't believe they do that. Ball is on the 13-yard line. First down. Walt Michaels. This is the kind of ball game he dreaded today in our conversation. Because of the way the Blitz can play. Because this team has not been playing well. And because of this bad weather. Ball is at the 13. They lead 7-3. 3.22 to go. And a very, very quick game. Obviously, not too many passes. And none complete. Only an interception. And Walker is getting yeoman. Oh, he lost the football. Walker has dropped the football, and the official say it belongs to the Blitz. Let's wait till they get up. Who has got it? Ken Kelly says, I have got it. That ball just popped out of the hands, and the ball is recovered inside the 20. Well, it was inevitable in this game. All right, you see Herschel Walker. He has the ball really in the wrong hand. The number... Bob Napton, number 58, is the man that knocks the ball out. Kelly recovers the fumble, but Herschel had the ball in, 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 the, in the wrong hand. Should have had it to his outside. Well, they scored after an interception by Bryant. Now they got a bigger opportunity after the fumble by Walker. First down, 16-yard line. Training by four. <laughs> And Vegas Ferguson does not get back to the line of scrimmage. John Miller was there. Miller might be tested tonight. Remember, he's going in for Bob Leopold. Was out with a bad knee. Third leading tackler. Four interceptions. Two of those returned for touchdowns. Well, John Miller's on, on the weak side of the, of the defense. So just take a look at it. He just comes straight down the line of scrimmage. Vegas Ferguson is trying to get to the hole. I don't know if the hole is there anyway. Willie Harper was in the hole. But John Miller played it very well. Shows great reaction coming down the line. Paul, there have only been five passes tonight in the strong win. None has been completed. One has been intercepted. Surprising thing, only one fumble so far. Second down. Oh, Evans has got the ball, and they've got him. The man that's got him is Jim Byrne. And the man that hit him first was John Miller, the blitzing linebacker. And that's way back across the 25-yard line. A loss of 10 yards. You said John Miller was going to be tested, but this time, this was supposed to be a bootleg for Vince Evans to come out. And it's, it's naked. There are no guards. There's nobody there. All the, all the action goes to the right. Vince Evans rolls to his left. And John Miller was there. But he did get help. But John Miller, as you said, is the, the guy that really made the play. Two-minute warning. 7-3, New Jersey. Blitz is on, and across the middle, they collide, the ball is no good, and now a delayed flag goes down. The ball was intended for Sean Potts, a delayed flag goes down, and after the flag went down, then someone took a shot at Potts. And I think it's going to be the 15 yards and an automatic first down. I don't know if it was Billy Caesar was in on that one again or not, but there was a collision. Dave Kamansky sorting it out and will tell us, or at least indicate to us, and that's what it is. What we got? That's a personal foul charge there, not uh, pass interference, but we'll see. Maybe that's why the flag was delayed, <laughs> because it came after the play. Now, there's a difference here. Personal foul is the yardage, but pass interference is 15 yards and an automatic first down. There's a big difference because it was third down and 20. And they're marking it just down to the 15. 
That's what it is. Personal foul on the defense. Be a first down. Be a first down on the personal foul? Why not? Am I wrong there? No, that's personal foul. That's, that's first down. Okay, I'm wrong there. I know that on... It's an automatic on your pass. It's, it's, not, it's, it's also an automatic on a personal foul. Where have I been? Oh, you were, where were you last week? You were in Los Angeles Saturday. <laughs> Here's Haynes in motion. On the first down, big play there. There's Canada. Canada down. Well, he gets inside the 10-yard line. A lot of second effort showed by Larry Canada there with Lockett holding on to it. Second down and six. Jim Stone makes his first appearance in the backfield. He's been in the ball game on special teams. Stone will replace Larry Canada. Only carried the ball 14 times this year. Cold, cold night in Chicago. Windshield factored 19 degrees. And seven, swinging the ball out to Worthy, who can't hold on to it. 109 to go. And that, it'll be third down. That was a pretty play. They they put Worthy on the wing and then they brought him back in motion. And Vince Evans hit him with the ball running away. Really no one out there. He just dropped the football. James Lockett, number 96, who was the left defensive end, was trying to cover. But Worthy had already had him beat to the outside. We are still trying to complete our first pass of the ball game. With one minute and nine seconds to go in the half. They've not thrown that much. Nevertheless, in this day and age, that is rather remarkable and gives you an indication of the weather and the wind. There's Evans. He's going to try to get his first. Still there. Throws it out, and there's a completed pass to Gary Lewis, and he may have the first down. It would be first and goal to go. John Miller made the stop. That's a big completed pass right there. He had to get the ball to, to uh, just outside the two. All right, Close. we're going to see our first reception. This is a memorable occasion. <laughs> Vince Evans was not looking at Gary Lewis, and he finds him out here by himself, and he had trouble catching the ball. There's Miller back in the tackle, but did he get to the two-yard line? He had to get almost to the two. Well, if he does not make it, Marv Levy is faced with yet another decision. That's how far he's got to go. Do you take the almost sure three? No, he's not going to do that because Seibel is still on the sidelines. Fans are saying go. Marv Levy's team is 4-9, and nine, blown out by Birmingham 41-7 last week. Well, you're 4-9. and nine. Three still that they, it doesn't put you ahead, right? That's right. So it, may, it would make it 7-6. They're going to take a timeout and take a look at it here. But this is the thing to do. Just go for it. The team that has worked hard, they've moved the ball down the field. Give them a shot at it. Well, sure, I think the question is what is he going to do, not whether he is going to do it. Evans going over with Ron Waller down there. Offensive coordinator, I can't see among all those folks there who is there. It's Marv Levy, Whitey Duval, so, your, your Whitey Duval. Duval, yep. Been on this league for a little while. Coast under Jim Tatum in Maryland. There's the story, 56 seconds to go in this very short first half, made short by the fact that they have not been throwing the ball around. 7-3, the first three points of the blitz came after a turnover and interception. Now Herschel Walker has fumbled the football and it was recovered at the 16-yard line. There's a personal foul penalty and a completed pass, the first of the game. But all of a sudden it is fourth down and about two feet to go. And they're going to go for the first down. They've got Vic James in the game as one of the wide receivers. Now let's see how they set up. James is the wide receiver and he's just outside the right tackle. Everybody else in tight. Okay, going for the first down is Vegas Ferguson. And I'm not going to mark the ball, but they're marking the ball inside the two. And if that is true, he has the first down. A uh, linesman came running across and marked the ball inside the two. And that would be the first down. Jim Woody Harper upended him. Worthy's coming back in. Ferguson is going out. 
There they go. First down. All right, here it is from the from the ground. They just watch what Vegas Ferguson does. He gets up over and sticks the ball out. That's dangerous. They can slap the ball away, which they tried to do. Miller tried to come in and slap it away. They've got Doug Hoppick, number 74, tackle playing tight end. And they've got 44 seconds on the clock. Worthy cutting inside. Worthy touchdown. His first. Well, that's his third touchdown rushing the ball, and he's got one catching the ball. Rookie out of Wilmington gets the job done. And the big plays were, well, let's watch this first. All right, let's take a look at it. They're crashing down. They're beginning a block on the outside by Bob Simmons, number 73, former Kansas City player. And then Worthy gets into the end zone. The big plays were, naturally, the fumble by Walker, the recover by Kelly, but then the personal foul call on third down and 20. And Seibel comes in and adds the extra point, and all of a sudden, it is the blitz for a back leading. Both scores, direct results of turnovers. Let's take a look at it from the line. Here they come right at you. Now, Worthy, you know, he knows that he's going to follow in the footsteps of Larry Canada. There's Canada there, and you also see Bob Simmons coming up. But watch, he knows that he really doesn't have the touchdown. He has to stretch out to get it. He's following Canada up into the hole. Bob Simmons getting the block, and then he just stretches out to get the ball over the goal line. ESPN with very few other people in Soldier Field, Chicago on a cold, cold night. And bad news for Rod Walters. He's got that right leg bent at the knee as he is being helped off the field. It is first down at the nine-yard line, 10 to 7 Chicago. The Blitz only had half the amount of offense that the Generals did in the first half, but they led at the end of the half 10-7. And as a result of a third turnover, here they go again. They hope. Canada straight ahead. Canada touchdown. They moved that offense around so much you could see the generals jumping all around, and Canada found a seam and went right up the middle. And again, something I mentioned in the first half, it's amazing when you know they're going to run the football and they're coming right at you. There's Woodland 71 getting blocked by the center. Canada just hits that crack, the big back, and once he did that, it was all over with. He's into the end zone. Larry Canada, watch him explode through the line of scrimmage. Right there, he just sees that little crack, and once he gets into the open field, it's goodbye. Gregory Johnson, 27, meets him at the goal line, but you can forget that. Canada knocked Tom Woodland right down. Seibel in to add the extra point, and does so. 12.56 to go, third quarter. And surprise, surprise, it is a blitz by 10, 17 to 7. But remember, the blitz clobbered. Los Angeles 42 to 29 in the Express of No Bad Ball Club and also administered a 29-17 beating of Denver a couple of weeks ago. Jim, you know, we talked about turnovers in a football game. All three New Jersey turnovers in this game resulted in scores. Two touchdowns and a field goal. And that's something that a coach, and I don't care what Walt Michael says to the football team, that's something he just cannot control. Now Seibel to kick off. And Hackett and Pegues are deep again. They want to handle the ball correctly. High in the air. Deep in the end zone. And out of the end zone. It'll come up to the 20-yard line. And so they won't have to handle that football. And Brian Sipe will get his hands on the ball here in the second half. Sipe with Herschel Walker having an outstanding first half. Including that touchdown run of 69 yards. Maurice Carthen. Fullback. Scoring drive after the fumble by Hackett, only 25 yards, just took three plays. Canada took it in from nine yards out. Sipe's going to have to throw the football. Perhaps he's not throwing there as Carthen gets the ball across the 25-yard line to the 26-yard line. Well, Paul, the weather has cleared up. I never thought I'd see it happen today, but we can see lights out across Lake Michigan. 
along the shoreline of the lakefront here in Chicago. The strong wind continues. That has not abated one bit and is right in the face of the generals at the moment as they're facing second down. And about three to go. Marshall Walker. Whoops, Walker runs right into Malcolm Taylor and is shy of the first down. Third down and short. Big Malcolm Taylor out of Tennessee State made the stop. Number 70. Well, Herschel takes a toss from Sipe, and, and it looks like he might have some running room to the inside. But just take a watch. Malcolm Taylor, you're right, number 70. The big man is right there to make the play. Number 59, Ken Kelly is also in on the play. But they're waiting on the outside. They're forcing Herschel to run back to the inside. You notice that a lot, of, a lot of his good runs are just to the outside of the tackle. Third down and three. Yep, man. Carthon has the first down across the 30-yard line. Maurice Carthon tripped up by Mike Fox, but too late to stop the first down. All right, here goes John Jewell. He's getting a help with Ken Hall. Now, Ken Hall blocks with Jewell. Look at Jewell on Puha. You turn, when you can turn that defensive tackle, that creates the hole. <laughs> Very little throwing tonight. Danny Knight comes wide to the left. Collins to the right. Knight hands off to Walker. Walker near another first down across the 40-yard line. Mike Fox came over to help out and put him out. Herschel Walker does it again. I'm going to tell you something. The safeties are going to be hurting Fox oh, wow. and Wilcox because look at Herschel. Once he gets to the outside, he's... and I think it's Trent Bryant, number 21, came up oh. and missed him. But you're right. Fox is the man that makes the tackle. The interception by Bryant led to the field goal, and the fumble by Walker, and the fumble by Hackett led to touchdown. Second down and one, and straight ahead goes Carthen for the first down across the 45-yard line as they begin to control the ball. See, like I told you, Sipe's going to have to start throwing. <laughs> well, I was down the other end talking to Howard Schnellenberger. What were Sipe's statistics in throwing the ball in the first half? Well... As far as Sipe is concerned, uh, they have 0-0-0, zero, 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 but he, I know he threw an interception, and he threw a, a drop pass to, to uh, Herschel. There's Herschel Walker again. Well, I guess it's Walker right, Walker right, and Walker right. And a little bit of Carthen up the middle. Mm. You know, it, Doing I, what comes best. You know, and you can't say enough about it. When you watch a game like this, and, and the people at home are saying, you know, why aren't they throwing? There is a strong wind, true and a quarterback should be able to throw the ball in the wind. But when you have the offensive line that the Generals have and the offensive line that the Chicago Blitz have, and they're running the football, but the amazing thing is the defense knows that they're going to run the ball, and they can't stop them. Neither team has been able to stop the other team from running the ball. Second down, six to go. They have now moved into Chicago territory. And Herschel again. Can't tell me that's not effort right there. Tom Kilkenny, the principal tackler, It'll be third down. Walker, before that carry, had carried 14 times for 122 yards. They've said that they're going to hurry up offense here, but they say that Herschel Walker's been running tentative. I'll tell you, tonight he is not. Not at all. Third down, three to go. And here's Seifert, completed the pass yet, and has not now. Trying to find Walker, it's fourth down. Gabrielson was there, but that was not a well-thrown pass. And Jostis put Sipe down on the ground. Jim Sipe's pass, 0 for 3. 0 for 3. <laughs> that sounds like the first series of plays instead of well into the third quarter with nine minutes and two seconds left in the third quarter. And they, they've not, they've only, they threw two passes in the first quarter, first half, and one pass here. Why would you throw on third and three when, you, when, when, you, when you're running? They've been running the ball, stepping oh, right, right down the throat. Exactly. Fourth down. Bob Grupp to kick into that strong win. Daniel's a deep man, and he's not done a good job of kicking in a strong win. No fair catch called for by Daniel. Daniel turns the corner and gets out of bounds on the 26-yard line. So that is only about a 23-yard net punt. In the lower right-hand corner, you can see that they've got a fur 
thing around the head there. And the two fellows in the middle have got uh, blankets around them. And this is May the 28th. But we're in Chicago, the wind chill factor. After the return by Daniel, that's a 17-yard punt. And Brian Sight knows that things are not going up well tonight. His team is down by 10, and he's not having a good night. Ball at the 26-yard line. There goes Canada. Lots of running room outside. And he's got a first down. There was nobody on the right defensive side of the New Jersey Generals within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And the man that should have been out there is John Miller, number 57. Watch 47, Joyce. He's going to get tied up. Miller trips him up, doesn't get to the outside, and here comes Larry Canada running wide to the outside. Gregory Johnson has got to help out on the help the tackle. looking for some help on the tackle. But the outside linebacker, and John Miller left the game, and Weddington, Mike Weddington, number 52, came in. Canada's now gained 69 yards himself. He picked up a first down there. And here comes Canada again. Oh, is he punishing people? He's got eight or nine yards. On one side of the line of scrimmage, Herschel Walker is putting people down. On the other side, Larry Canada is burying them. John Miller made the stop. Well, Gregory Johnson is the guy that's going to make the stop here, Jim, number 27, and he's the man who made the last stop. Watch this shot by Canada. Right into Gregory Johnson, number 27. Leclerc, number 55, is also there. But you talk about punishing people? The man he's punishing is Johnson. Second down and a yard to go. Worthy has come in. Canada? Well, my, look at this. He got to the 50-yard line. That's enough for the first down before he's driven back. And it took quite a few folks to drive him back, led by John Joyce. And we've got 7-15 and counting to go in the third quarter, 17-7 Chicago. And the Blitz are having some fun under the worst of circumstances. And New Jersey general linebackers are not. Leclerc, 55. Joyce, 47. Now, they're going straight ahead. Here comes Leclerc. He just misses Canada coming through. Preston, Johnny Preston, is the man that really hits him and makes the stop at the, at past the line of scrimmage, but it's another first down. Ball at the 49 of Chicago. Anderson in motion. You don't think Evans is going to throw, do you? Yes, yes he, he is. is. On first down and has a man, and it is almost intercepted and is intercepted. John Joyce picks it up. They went out of one man's hands into another, and Joyce has got the turnover. And back to the 39. Running the ball as they were, threw it on first down into double coverage, and got intercepted. Jim, you figure it out. You figure uh, it out. Again, we're seeing the, the Jersey Generals, they had the ball. They're running with the football. They throw the ball. Now here, the Chicago Blitz running with the football very well with Larry Canada. And now they put Vince Evans to throw into double coverage. That ball went off of Johnson's hands into Joyce's hands, and he picks up the ball and moves back the other way. It's going to be first down to Generals. But again, why would you want to throw the football? That's the question I ask you. I don't know. All right, here's Vince yeah, Evans. of surprise, I guess. And into double coverage. The ball was overthrown. No one there to pick it up. Potts was the man he was throwing to. From a 38-yard line, the Generals immediately get the ball to Carthen. Carthen sweeps the right side, and they may have the first down, but they say he stepped out. On the 47-yard line, driven up by Tommy Wilcox. There's John Joyce, who finally got the ball after it had been tipped by Gregory Johnson. That's the turnover, and maybe this will do something to the generals who must win tonight. I said sight must pass. Now, obviously wrong, but I'll tell you right now, what both teams should do is throw the passing game completely out and just strictly stay with the run. Their only success tonight has been with the run. Either team. Straight ahead, there goes Carson. Carson is shy, I do believe, at the first down at about the 48 and a half. Puha and Taylor were there to meet him. And that'll be third down. Very, very few flags tonight, but there was one big flag on a personal foul that kept the drive of the Blitz alive, and it looked as though they were being stalled and had actually lost yardage. They will measure to see whether or not it's a first down. He, they have to get, the generals have to get to the 49-yard line. And I think it's going to be short. No, it's right again. Well, yeah. you and I, boy, we're, we're blue perfect 10. <laughs> <laughs> On occasion. 
Well, that's the territory. First down from the 49-yard line. 5.29 to go. Very sparse crowd. Could be the smallest crowd ever in the history of the USFL. The smallest crowd until tonight was 4,176 at Boston last year in May when Denver was there in a driving rainstorm. And that's how we began tonight's ball game in a driving rainstorm. The rain is gone. The winds have not. Jim Napton has come in as an outside linebacker now. Number 58 replacing Ken Kelly, 59. New Jersey has a reverse. I put it in right now with Herschel handing the ball off. Well, he's not going to hand it off. He's going to be caught in the backfield, and there's a man we just talked about, Bob Napton, who just came into the game. Number 58. Throw him all the way back to the 42-yard line. Bob Napton, number 58, was... He wasn't really hurt. They just made the change as far as linebacker is concerned. He's just getting way to the outside, forcing everything there. Maurice Carthen, number 33, trying to block him. No help at all there. Second down. And 16 to go. Sipe is going to be forced to go back to the air here shortly. Maybe right here, huh? Puts it out here for Herschel Walker, and Walker's in the crowd, and getting out of the crowd. Walker gets across the 50-yard line, and it'll be third down to nine. Mike Fox, well, I want to tell you that. How many times have I called Mike Fox or Tommy Wilcox or Livers on a tackle of big Herschel Walker? It's true, Jim, but take a look at this. This is supposed to be a screen. First of all, the center's downfield on the screen but look at there's nobody really out front of walker mackey is the only man that was there herschel ran back away from the play and here comes fox to take herschel at the knees third down and nine to go <laughs> thanks for the ticket need any more side over the middle to nobody because the rush was on its fourth down Speck was there, and so are about four of the Chicago Blitz. And Sipe hands on hip. At least he's thrown a screen pass and completed something as he did to Herschel Walker, but that screen did not set up well. There's one team out there that's having a great time tonight. Whether, that's, whether, the blitz. that's the Blitz. That's they are the having blitz. a super time. They're doing all the things that they want to do. They have the game plan. It was, was perfect for this weather. Well, Bob Grupp is the man who's going to kick the ball away to Donnell Daniel. Generals have outstanding ownership and Donald J. Trump, outstanding coaches and Michael. They got a Herschel Walker. They're solid. The Blitz don't have all of that. So this is a big night for them. They don't even know who owns them. And there's another bad the kick by Grupp. Who only got a 17-yarder last time net, but this will be slightly better, but not great into the wind as the ball is down at the 19-yard line. 3.36 to go third quarter, 17-7, Chicago. Now from the 20-yard line, the Generals are down 17-7. And they got to play Tampa Bay and New Orleans and Denver and Philadelphia. Marv Levy, great guy. Goes to Kansas City. His Montreal. Yeah. His California. Coordinator, Ron Waller, who's with him at Kansas City. I'll give you something to think about here in a minute. Canada's not there. Jim Stone is in there. That running back. First down from the 20. Here is Stone for one of his rare carries. And Stone is making a good drive. And is close to the first down at the 29-yard line. Jim Stone carrying the ball only for the 15th time this year out of Notre Dame. Well, Jim Stone, he's getting up looking at his shoulder, but just take a look at Again, I'm thoroughly amazed knowing that the team's going to run with the football, and you see Jim Stone getting the blocking out front, and he cuts back, and there's a hit made on a Johnny Preston. But and you might be thinking again, and looking at Stone, why the pass on first down, but it drew no blood as it turned out. Second down and short. Back in. And now here comes Worthy. Worthy's got the first down. Worthy's across the 35-yard line. John Joyce made the stop. Let me get back to the subject of Marv Levy. People can say, all right, the team is sold. Marv Levy, you've got a contract. What do you care? I mean, you are under the new ownership. But some people are saying that this team will not be sold. It will be simply... It will simply go out of business, bankrupt, and a new franchise to be started. We don't know. But if that's the case, and you're bankrupt, who pays off this man here? There's some worries he's got, plus trying to win some football games. I mean, the pressure is on at Soldier Field, Chicago, and they're having fun, at least tonight. Trying to win football games when you can't replace players. 
There's Canada back in with the breather, and he's got about three yards out to the 39-yard line. And John Joyce is again making a bundle of tackles tonight. And you might start thinking about those generals. As I said, they're 10 and 3 before tonight, unless they pull this thing out. They got Tampa Bay next Sunday, then New Orleans in Denver, then they wind up in Philadelphia. Nothing is positive. This is a game that everybody assigned to the generals as an easy win. They may yet win it, but it is not easy, is it? No, it's not easy. You know, when you when you look at the defense, Jim, and when they're running up and down the field like that, you just have the feeling the defensive line, instead of taking on the blocker, they're catching him. And if the offensive linemen are getting to the defensive linemen and just turning him any way they want to turn him. Second down eight. Preston had the blitz on, but Worthy steps around that and finally is caught by Willie Harper. Preston, the strong safety, was blitzing on the running play. Worthy sidestepped him, but Willie Harper was there to get it. Third down. Jim, let's take a look at it. At, at, here's James Lockett, number 96. Now, Durger is, is, is a tackle, but he's getting blocked by Keel on the inside. That is what's happening. They're getting taken to the inside. Uh, the offensive tackle pulled out. Keel, a tight end, blocked down. You know that Chicago's had, this is their eighth third down attempt for first down. They are 0 for 7 so far. And this is third down and 8. Evans he can almost run for it but he's going to throw for it and has it Leclerc puts the man down and that is Vegas Ferguson out of the backfield Daniels there to help but Vegas Ferguson has the first down and you're right just, just watch Vince Evans now he's going to get blocking and watch what happens the blitz was on Vince Evans moves to the outside. There's really nobody there. Willie Harper is absolutely frozen, the linebacker. He can't do anything. Vegas Ferguson is downfield. That's the end of the quarter, and Chicago's on a move. Well, that's the first down. They picked up the first down on third, and they lead by 10 at the end of three. Cold Soldier Field, Chicago. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire. We begin the fourth quarter, 17-7. Chicago, they got a first and 10 at midfield. Yeah, a little mix up there, but that's okay for Canada. He still picks up six or seven yards. Again, John Joyce and Gregory Johnson holding on. Well, well <laughs> one passing yard. One passing yard, 190 to 145. Chicago winning this game 17 to 7. Stats do not mean a thing. Remember, it's New Jersey 150 at the end of the half, and Chicago 75 at the end of the half. So Chicago has turned that around a little bit. By the way, who's to be the men and MVP? A thousand dollars to the players, college or university of his choice. I'm giving it to the cheerleaders for showing up. Second and short, the blitz is on. Canada is caught by the blitz. Looked like John Preston coming in, as he so often does. And number 25, and you can see the locket is also there, but. Let's see who did get it. All right, here comes Canada with the ball. But watch, he's going to hit in the backfield. That You're is, absolutely right. It's Preston. John Preston. Sure. He just fired it. They had the blitz by the linebacker. James Lockett helping out. But Preston has already made the play. We're down to third down now, right? Third down and a couple of yards. Ball is at the 42. They've got to nudge it across the 39. So it's third and three. Field and it may be holding and they may bring it all back and that's what it's going to be no first down it's going to be third down and plenty after the holding call i said new jersey ought to put the reverse and i forgot about chicago they have a, a reverse and boy was that beautiful haynes came around there was just absolutely nobody there and then the holding way back behind the line of scrimmage and it, it doesn't make any sense next the ball back to the 48 see what it was Holding. Offense number 57. That's Mark Third Fisher. Down. The center. The rookie out of Notre Dame. The only offensive lineman that plays every single down as long as he is healthy. The other guards and tackles all alternate. Second penalty for Chicago. But that's a big one there. They might have put the game out of reach. Well, that was beautiful. It was wide open. 
Chicago by 10, 13-27 to go in the game. Evans, blitz was on, they pick up McClare, throws it out here. For Ferguson, it is intercepted, but stepping out of bounds is Gregory Johnson with his third interception. And that's the second interception in this half of Vince Evans. Throwing the football. Throwing the football. That's what hey, he did. You know, I'm just saying, he's throwing the ball. Let's take timeout. 20 to go, and the Generals had better put a move on here. They are down by 10. Sipe has got the football. He's going to put it up for grabs, and there's Speck, the tight end, first down at midfield. Virgil Livers makes the stop. That's the best-looking pass play we have seen all night long. And Speck was right there to make the catch. Jeff Speck here is a play-action pass to Herschel. The safeties don't get back, and the linebackers don't get deep enough, and there, there is Speck. Jeff Speck is there. Number 27, Mike Fox, is helping out on the tackle, but it's the first down. They're moving the ball. 21-yard pickup. Sipe is going to throw again, and now he overthrows Clarence Collins. The rookie out of Illinois State, playing his first game after being injured, did not play last Monday. Second down. You know, it's an interesting thing about Walker. He's carried the ball 16 times for 119 yards, but nine of his runs have been less than three yards. The 69-yard run was a thing of beauty. Sipe is two for eight, 27 yards, and one interception. There's a delay on the handoff to Walker. Where are you going to go, Herschel? He gets a block from behind. There is no flag on it, and the fans saw the... The illegal block, but no flag went down. And they began to boo as Walker peeled off to the left and picked up a couple of yards. Watch, if you can see it here, the man that gets blocked. Paul. Jostis is the number 66, the man that's going to get blocked. Here's Herschel, no place to go. Watch. This thing took Watch. too long to get. There's Jostis in, in the play. And there he gets now, hit from behind. Hit, blocked from behind by number 73, Doug, Doug Mackey. Mackey. The fans saw it. They started to boo immediately, but there was no flag. Third down. Knight goes to the left, Collins to the right. And this is a big situation here. Third and eight. Now a flag's going to go down. And Sipe is going to complete the pass to Cawthorn. And why not? Because I believe that the other team, Chicago, was offside. And they'll take that play if that's the case. Everybody just stopped playing. Except Sipe and Cawthorn. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Tim Fox and Tommy Wilcox for Chicago are going to be awfully sore tomorrow morning. That time, Fox took on Carthen, but he picks up about six yards after the hit. But to Paul, here is third down and eight to go. Someone jumped offside. Okay, they jumped offside. But the blitz simply just kind of stood there and let Sipe. Nobody came out to cover Carthen at all. Let the ball be thrown to him. He's got a first down. They had him back at third and eight. Defense, number 66, offside, penalty refused. First down. Mental breakdowns, Jim, in a ball game. And that's a mental breakdown. When you just stop, Carthen just slipped out in the flat and nobody covered him. Ball at the 27-yard line, 17 to 7. The generals trail and they are on the move. And so is Walt Michaels on the move. And Herschel Walker. Look at that. Get that second effort by Walker. Livers is holding on, but at 185, powerful Herschel Walker weighs 40 more pounds than he does. Just dragged it. Jim, it looked like Herschel was going to be stopped in the hole. <clears throat> Watch what happens at defensive end. See Jostis? He doesn't commit himself to the inside. Herschel sidesteps him. Now watch Herschel, though. His legs never stop moving. Even though he's being held up, Herschel Walker continues to move his legs and picks up another five yards. Ball is at the 12-yard line. First down, Napton comes in to replace Gabrielson on the left side as linebacker. 146 yards for Herschel. And he'll try to get some more. Hit again a couple times, but gets from the 12 down to about the 7 to pick up a 5 yards. Ken Kelly, one of the tacklers, killed Kenny another. Here comes Works. Herschel Walker in your face. Carthens blocking right there on Fox. Look at Herschel, and he's not running tentatively either. He is running hard. 
Joseph comes over number 66 to make the tackle, but that's after a five-yard gain. And Wilcox there also. Second down, seven to go. Make it six to go. Here's Sight. Nice looking, and Speck takes a terrific shot as the ball got there, and the ball popped loose. Boy, you're holding your head. Throw the ball. Second and five. Come on. Here's Seif. He's going to throw it to Speck. And Speck is the only one with three people on him. Take a look at it. Here comes Kelly. The shot is there. Now, the other inside linebacker takes his shot. Number four, Kilkenny, number 54. But here's the pass play. Look at the coverage downfield. There are a lot of people around Speck. And sitting out here, number 33, Carthen, all by himself. Third down and six. Sight throws, and there's Carthen, and Carthen does not get into the end zone, but may have the first down. We'll see where they mark it. Mike Fox ran him out. Maurice Carthen out in the flat. He could have thrown to him the last time. This is with the help from the coaches upstairs. They they tell Sight, take a look for Carthen out in the outside. There's really nobody on him. Speck's going to try to help out and get a block. And here comes Tim Fox, or Mike Fox again. I'm sorry, but he's going to be sore. First down, first and goal to go at the one-yard line. 17 to 7. This is where they take Herschel over the top. Well, they got they may on fourth down if they need it, the way they've been moving the football now. Maybe they won't have to go over the top. Walker is certainly not lining up in that situation. Split backs. Arthur tries to get into the end zone and does. Touchdown of the year on a 71-yard drive. Maurice Carthen just uh, this is just power offense. Now the offensive line going to the defensive line, but the defensive line straightening them up. And remember now, the only thing that has to go across is the ball. And it just breaks the plane. Touchdown. 17-13, and on comes Roger Ruzek. Well, he missed one all year, and it is 17-14. With 10 minutes and 6 seconds to go, it is not over yet. John Jewell, number 70, left your screen. Ken Hall, the center. Take a look at it. Puha is being blocked. They're going straight at it. Number 25, Tommy Wilcox got in there. But here they are. Look at you see Herschel's cheated up, so you figure that Carthen's going to get the ball. But just take a look at the power of Carthen. All he has to do, remember, is just as long as the ball breaks the plane, it's a touchdown. That happened, and the ball just fell off the tee. There's the attendance, 4,307. So this is not the smallest crowd. You can see a lot of folks are indoors up top of your screen. This is not the smallest crowd. The smallest crowd, remember, remember was at Boston, as we said, last year, 4,176. It just seems like the smallest crowd at this big stadium, believe me. Big James driven deep in the end zone and watches it go out of the end zone. And so now Chicago at 9.59 on the clock will have the ball at their own 20-yard line, first down and 20. Now they had the ball and were moving the ball and gave it up on an interception, only to have Sype complete a big pass to Speck at midfield and then move the ball down to make it a close game. 4,307, huh? Mm-hmm. There's 4,000 of them indoors. Let's see that. They might have counted the ESPN crew. And now... Run this... Second man through, and that is worthy. Does not get too much, does he? Maybe a yard. John Miller there. They got to hang on to this football with Herschel Walker and Brian Sype looking better because nobody looked good throwing the ball in the first half, and they've all been intercepted. Evans twice in the second half. Marv Levy doesn't want to see this slip away. We told you, tough, tough days, Marv Levy. But when you've been a head coach of California, New Mexico State, Kansas City, Montreal, William and Mary, you've been through it before. Quick pitch back, trying to get outside is Worthy, and Worthy just dives across the 20 to about the 22, and that's going to be third down and eight. Willie Harper pursuing him across there. 
along with John Joyce who seems to be around the ball nearly every time that we mentioned the defense and in comes Sean Potts apparently with a play for Vince Evans now remember Evans has been intercepted twice is throwing into the wind and as Paul has pointed out, even with the wood, it's tough to throw tonight. What you have to do with Vince Evans defensively, the defensive linemen have to keep in mind that the Vince Evans can move and get to the outside. So you've got to contain him. You can't let him sit back there. They're going with a three-man rush, and they're going to send the linebacker. Evans, linebacker in, and no place to go. No place to go. That was Mike Weddington blitzing. Worthy never had a shot. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage at fourth down. And here comes Gossett again. And here's where they really need Jeff Gossett. Outstanding punter. Punting into a strong win. Mike Williams deep, but almost certain to get good field position barring a turnover. You know what's incredible? Jeff Gossett has got a 38-yard average in this game, Jim and he, all three kicks have been against the wind, and that's, that shows you why he is the number one punter in the USFL. Here comes number four into the wind. This time, though, he's standing on his own seven-yard line. This is where he better get one, about 40. Mike Williams is up at the 45 near the midfield, just eager. A lot of time on the clock, 7.40 to go, and he did not get one. Did not get one. Maybe he'll get the bounce. Nope, he's not even going to get much of a bounce. The line of scrimmage is a 20-yard line. That's about a 27-yard punt. 17-14, the Generals trail. Who said that football is too hot to play it in late May? Chill factors we came on here tonight was 19 degrees, if you did not hear that. 19 degree chill factor. I didn't say it. <laughs> the Generals... You would have to think are back in the ball game and may have the momentum strictly on their side. The Blitz have been intercepted a couple of times, could not move the ball that time, had to punt it away. Didn't even kick the ball 25 yards, one of the rare bad punts for Gossip. And here they are, the Generals in Blitz territory at the 47. That's Walker in motion. And that's Carthen with the ball. Carthen turns the corner, got a good block from Walker. And he's thrown out of bounds as he gets inside the 30-yard line. Boy, you're so right. He did get an excellent block from Herschel. Herschel didn't knock Tim Fox or Mike Fox down, but I'll tell you what he does do. He screens it. Now watch Reese Carthy come. In. Speck gets an excellent block, but here's Herschel. All he did was hold up Fox long enough for Carthen to get around the outside. Bob Napton put him down. All right, let's take a look at Speck. He's blocking on Kelly, the linebacker. And watch him now. He'll go down the line, then he'll turn. And when he turns him in, he seals him off. Not a whole lot of holding, just a little bit. <laughs> First down from a 30-yard line. His Walker in motion again. But this time, Parkland goes straight ahead and gets about five yards down to the 25-yard line. And now the Generals are beginning to assert themselves with a number two rushing game in the USFL. They trail by three, 6.40 to go. Walker is well over 100 yards. We've told you that. Maurice Carthen had 93 yards at the moment on 14 carries. Second down. Five to go. Tight, quick drop. Snaps the ball out, and the ball is not caught by Clarence Collins. Ball was low. Collins fell diving for it. It'll be third down and five. Brett Bryant over there. Were you looking at me for the passing situation where they're running the ball like that? Oh, yeah. I just, uh, well, you got to mix them up, Paul. <laughs> yeah, but not when you're running so well. Uh, first down, you pick up five yards. Uh, the wind is blowing. It is a factor. You're throwing that ball naked to the outside because if the quarterback picks it off, he's gone. Third down. Five to go. Sight throws across the middle. Speck. Has it, and Speck can score, and he does! 25-yard touchdown pass, sight to Speck. And now the Generals are in front for the first time since they led on Herschel Walker's 69-yard scamper. One of the most consistent players on the Generals team has been Jeff Speck. Watch a little pop over the middle, and he breaks two tackles right there. Fox is one. Wilcox, I believe, was the other one, the two safeties, and Speck into the end zone touchdown. A couple of touchdowns within the last four minutes. 
One, the result of a turnover. One, a result of a good defensive team, and it's 21-17 New Jersey. Sight to Jeff Speck, number 81, and they just split the two safeties. Watch a little pop pass across the middle. There's Speck. Here come the two safeties. They both miss. Will Cox and Fox, and then Speck into the end zone. Again, I say, Jim, that one of the most consistent players on this team is Jeff Speck. Sipe is now 5 for 11 for 85 yards after throwing touchdown to Speck. Was caught his fifth of the year. Ruzik will kick it off to Vic James. Long drive of 46 yards. Gee, under a minute and a half. Final 25 yards from Sipe to Speck. Now with 6-11 to go, and the ball has been blown off the team. You'd be surprised. We keep saying it's 19-degree chill factor, but while we were away, the players on the field are running in place and everything else trying to keep themselves warmed up. It is cold out there <laughs> without wind blowing and as wet as it has been. James deep in the end zone. He'll let that go out of the end zone again as Ruzik kicking with the wind puts it through the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 yard line, first and 10. Then an MVP, we got to make a decision. I think it's rather apparent this week because the man is, well, let them tip it off. Let them guess for a little while. 6.05 to go. And here come the blitz because this is not over yet. Mark Keel comes in. And Gary Lewis is out at tight end for the blitz. Heel number 83. Ferguson slots to the left. What they need here is patience. They want to move the ball. Here's Canada. Oh, my, what a play by Jim Byrne starting tonight because Lynn Matson is out with a neck problem. Byrne, the rookie out of Wisconsin lacrosse, really made a play. Oh, Jim Byrne does. Just watch what he does to Canada here. He's going down the line of scrimmage. He sees Canada and just gets his shoulder into that knee and knocks Canada down. <laughs> Byrne knows it. Second down and ten. Marcus said, boy, the wide receivers are going out of this ball game saying, where were we in this whole thing? Because they haven't caught a pass yet on either team. Short drop by Evans, throws it to the sideline, and that's Mark Keel over there, and Kerry Justin puts him out of bounds. But that is shy of the first down. Take a look at these numbers. <laughs> Five of 11, two of nine. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Oh, we got a touchdown in there, though. Well, that 90% of that is the wind and the weather, naturally. Ball is put down on the 20-yard line. One more time. And it is third down. How about the old reverse again? No? I need something here. No. Evans. Evans is almost intercepted for the third time. Intended for Keel. Gregory Johnson dove in front of him and nearly came up with the ball. But again, against the win, Gossett, who was less than successful last time, must kick it again. Gregory Johnson it will, probably won't be our most valuable player, but take a look at this play. And he had his arm all over Mark Keel, too. The question is, was the ball there? Was the arm there before the ball was there? Evans is having a tough night. Well, so is Sipe. Sipe has improved only a little bit lately. Here's Gossett. Kick the ball away. Now again, he's standing on his seven. This time, Williams, after the last kick, is not at the 50. He's inside the 45. If Gossett gets one into this win, Williams is going to have a lot of retreating to do. And he didn't get it again. This is where, Look at the wind carry that. That ball went about 17 yards. New Jersey's got it and the lead. of the win that was a 16 yard punt at one time Gossett was three for 38 and a half plus yards now he is five for 31.6 yards well this, this kind of a day takes you out of first place there's Jeff Gossett there and he is an excellent punter came into the league with the only only punter averaging over 42 yards 
But I know how you feel, Jeff. Well, I'll tell you one thing he knows. He'll never be able to punt with the win. He hasn't done it all night in his five punts, and he'll never will in this quarter. So his average is going to go way down. Here's Walker swinging out of motion. They get the ball to Carthen. And Carthen gets down near the 30-yard line. A pickup of six yards with Malcolm Taylor hanging on. Jim, we saw the last time the New Jersey Generals got the ball, they put Herschel Walker in motion twice. Once he got a block for Carthen, he picked up 16 or 17 yards, and Carthen again on the five-yard play. What this does, when you take Herschel out of the backfield, it makes the defense start to think and shift. Now that they're key, they key on Herschel, obviously everybody does. When it takes him out, it leaves Carthen back in there, but you've got to move your linebackers and someone to cover Herschel. It takes the people out of the play. Second down and a long four, 21-17 New Jersey. 4.02 to go as Carthen gets down shy of the first down, but he's inside the 30, and that clock continues to run below the four-minute mark now, 3.50. Carthen that must be near the 100-yard mark himself now. He is 102, so we've got two men in the ballgame over, make that 101. Herschel Walker's got 140 yards. Well, that number three rushing offense, or number two rushing offense, will not falter at all in the statistical standings this week at all. They might improve their position. Third down and short. Here comes Herschel. He cut right inside two potential tacklers. What a move he made. First down at the 20-yard line. They were taken to the outside, and he just booked back inside, and Malcolm Taylor, among others, was just left on the ground slamming the turf. You're absolutely right, Jim. Just watch the move. Watch his feet. When he sees there's nobody on the outside, he just digs in and cuts back. He's got so much power, squares himself up downfield, and then he gets ready to take on the blow by Wilcox. And Herschel Walker picks up the first downer at the 20-yard line. That's beautiful. 21-17, 2.42 to go. The General's looking to go 11-3 and, and come closer to clinching a playoff spot. There's Carthen again. And a flag goes down. Carthen got down near the 16-yard line, but a flag went down as he was on his way to the 16. And there's Tim Fox again. Those safeties are having a tough night between Carthen and Walker trying to handle them. Offside charts against the Generals. Very few penalties in tonight's game, and we've only got 2.26 to go. <laughs> Walt Michaels, uh, well, I don't know if Walt's over there smiling or not. It was not a thing of beauty against Pittsburgh last week when they won 16-14. This has hardly been a work of art either. But, as Walt said, I'll take it. Look at all the people that are not here tonight. Walker now has 148 yards. And Herschel goes in motion. As Carson getting out there, has a block, good block, cuts inside, gets down to the 15-yard line. Doug Mackey did quite a job leading the way that time. The left tackle. Jim, I'll give you something about Herschel Walker, an 83 against the Blitz, but you've got to understand something. Chicago's going to take a timeout with 2.13 remaining in the fourth quarter. But the Chicago Blitz in 1983 are the Arizona Wranglers now. 1985. But the Chicago Blitz team, 138 yards, 141 yards. You know what that means, don't you? we yeah, got to go away for a minute. 2.13 left time was called by the Blitz in order to save some time on the clock, but a touchdown here would just about put this out of reach. The Blitz have scored their three scores, two touchdowns and a field goal as direct results of turnovers. Their offense has not done all that much for them. This is second down, five to go. And there's Carthen and look up top, there's Malcolm Taylor. He's having a good night, except he was grasping for air on the last run by Herschel Walker. We're coming down to the two-minute mark, and we hit the two-minute mark right there. There's the whistle. Two minutes to go, 21 to 17. The generals have come from behind. Ball inside the 15-yard line, two minutes to go, 21 to 17. Herschel Walker has gained 148 yards and wins our men and most valuable player award. 69-yard touchdown run. 
And as Paul McGuire said, no tentative running here, folks. None at all. No, Herschel, when he breaks it to the outside, that's Mackey getting a block out front. Once Herschel hits the secondary, it's goodbye. There's Fox trying to catch him. And he can forget all that. Livers was also there trying to catch him, number 24. That'll erase a lot of those things said about Walker. But, well, he's just not running the way he used to. I want to tell you, he is tonight. Those 148 yards. Well over the 1,000-yard mark now. Second in the league. It's third down. Three to go. And they give it to Carthen. And he's down to the 10. And now we go to where they marked the ball, whether or not he got the first down. Well, they got unloaded. If he got to the 10-yard line, in fact, he did, if he did, it'll be a first down. The ball is, I, the way they have that marker over there, you can't tell, but it should, it should have to touch the 10. Is it touching the 10? Nope. They'll call time, I do believe, to see whether or not it is a first down. Now, here's the situation, Jim. You're up by four. What do you do? Don't, don't. I go for it. Uh, I would because the, it keeps the clock going. If you kick a if you kick a field goal here, it stops the clock. They have a chance on a return to tie the game. But if they do make it, they put the game completely out of reach. If they get you know get it going on in a touchdown and they really don't have to score, just run the clock out because Chicago's already taken one time out. They only have two left. They're they're just inches away. And Walt Michael, he's telling. Is tight end Norris sure. Brown what to do? Sending him along with Jeff Speck, and they're going to go for it. A couple of tight ends. There's something that you know you don't coach for or expect in coaching, but if you don't make it, okay. The three points only puts it seven down, and the other team comes back as a two-point conversion. They could actually beat you. And let's go the other way as they call timeout the blitz. Let's go the other way. What if? What if? And that's the outside possibility. The field goal attempt is blocked, and they go the other way. And then, oh my. Well, you have to take a look at it at, at, at one thing. New Jersey got the opening kickoff. They fumbled the ball in the march by Chicago. All right, we'll take a look at this, and we'll get back to it. There's New Jersey's remaining. Well, it, it is not an easy one, although New Orleans is having its troubles lately. Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Denver is right at itself, and look at Philadelphia, 13-1. and one. So New Jersey should be 11-3 and three after tonight, although this game is not yet over, but it is not exactly an easy road. Chicago will be 4-10 and 10 after tonight. They get Oklahoma next week. And then they got to take a look at Jim Kelly. Again. They played Jim Kelly in Houston in a ball game, but you wouldn't believe. I believe the final score there was 41-36. Houston won it. Then they get Arizona and Michigan. And who would have thought after the first four or five games of this year that Michigan would be 7-7 seven and seven at this point, the defending USFL champions? Well, Chicago can play the spoiler. That's true. What I was talking about is, if you remember the beginning of the second half, when they kicked, when Chicago kicked off to New Jersey, New Jersey fumbled the ball. Chicago went on in and scored. But since that time, Chicago really has not been able to move the ball against New Jersey. The defense is solid. They know that Vince Evans and the Chicago Blitz would have to throw against the wind. They would also have to go 90 yards to score in less than two minutes with only one timeout now. Those two interceptions of Vince Evans and two punts by Gossett, one of 23 and one of 16 yards. It just kept the pressure on the blitz since they had the lead early on of 17 to 7 in the third quarter fourth and inch they go to Carthen and he's got the first down inside the 10-yard line first and goal to go and they can almost run this clock out the clock will stop now because they're below the two-minute mark till they get the sticks reset and then they can just put the knee down for a few times and ball game is over they need not run it, but the Blitz are going to call timeout one more time. And that's the end of the Chicago Blitz timeout. They can't do it anymore. And you, you know that New Jersey has something in mind. Remember, as the clock was running out against Pittsburgh last week, Carthen, well, that happened at midfield, though. Carthen running with the ball wide, fumbled the ball, the picked, ball up, and picked it up, and run for Let me tell you something, Paul. I guess this may go into the record book, too, although I do not know. Because of the lack of passing tonight, and mostly running this ball game now is approximately one and a half hours old. One and a half hours old. And we've got a minute and is it two and a half hours old? Two and a half hours old. That's why it seems so short. Yeah. Two and a half hours old. That's still a very, very short game. But it's been such a fun game. Yes, the time has gone so fast. <laughs> no, it has been a good game. And I'm sure that Marv Levy and the uh, group down there that led 17 to 7 and all the problems they have here. Although, as we have pointed out to you, the rumor that... 
It might be announced tomorrow that Eddie Einhorn will have a new team here in Chicago, or this team, we don't know which team, but a team in Chicago. He is the owner of the White Sox, so things might turn around there. And for the New Jersey Generals, they came out on a ball game they thought would be tough because of the elements and because of the blitz, and it has proven to be tough. Now they'll try to put it actually out of reach. They're going to just take a knee, it looks like here. Well, I've never seen a quarterback go back and stand like that. But Sipe just took the ball and stood straight up. Hoping, I guess, somebody would just put him in the grasp. But now they can let this run down again. There goes the clock. It can take all of the clock. We've got 127 on the game clock. And on the play clock, 24 seconds. Well, they can just let this run down. Generals, it has not been easy. And now, all of a sudden, they sent Tom McConaughey deep behind in case there is someone that picks up a fumble or something. They've got him playing as a center fielder to prevent a score. Sipe letting the clock run down. And now he will put his knee down. And we go below the minute mark. Remember, the Blitz can no longer call a timeout. Oh, the Generals are going to leave here 11 and 3. Philadelphia and Birmingham clinching playoff berths at least. New Jersey in the running. Tampa Bay, remember, they've got to play Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's right there with them. They take two from each conference. The audience has got a tough road ahead, but not an impossible road ahead. And Memphis surprised a lot of folks by dumping Tampa Bay over the weekend. That's the Eastern Conference schedule. And again, Walt Michaels is going to walk out with a very, very close win. 16-14 last week over Pittsburgh. 21-17 tonight over New Jersey. And this should be the last play of the game after they've been beaten by Washington, 31-17. So Sipe runs off. And the New Jersey Generals have put together back-to-back -back wins. 